PP Women's Union, I'll say, um, executives of the National Women's Union of MPP, Ghana, and USA. To my extreme left, I have dynamic woman Georgina Edusa Hawkins. She is the Columbus Chapter Women's Organizer. And next to her, I have Otiko Afisa Jaba, the National MPP National Women's Organizer. Next to her, I have Dr. Ifwa Sakodia Mensa. She is the MPP USA National Women's Organizer. Next to her, I have Ms. Ya Amposa, and she is the MPP USA Second Vice Chair. Our last but not the least is Maisha Shore, and she is a member of the Houston chapter. Tonight, we're here to deliberate on MPP's evening of interaction coming up tomorrow, the 24th of October, 2015. It's coming up at Crown Plaza Royal Hotel. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. How are you doing? Doing good, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I see some of you are so tired. <laughs> Um, I'll start with uh, Ms. Georgina. Can you tell, tell the viewers uh, a bit about your role in the MPP? Okay. Um, I'm the women's organizer for MPP Columbus chapter, and uh, we are really excited about um, the fundraiser that we are uh, planning for MPP USA, the women's wing and it's supposed to occur tomorrow and we're looking forward to um, having all of Columbus join us and from all over the country come and join us and participate in the political process in Ghana. And so I'm really, really excited and looking forward to a lot of people coming out and supporting our effort. Otiko, um, how's your journey? Exhausting. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah, coming from Amsterdam, from Ghana to Amsterdam. I heard you were over there um, last week. I yeah. I had an update about the mm. function. How did it go? It was great. It was awesome. How was the turnout? The turnout was, in terms of numbers, very good. Yeah. People came from Iceland, Norway, Lovely. you name it. Oh. All over the uh, world, they came around to have an, uh, our international conference. That was the fourth of its kind. Wow. Every two years, the New Patriotic Party has a conference, an international conference, outside of Ghana, where we have the branches coming together. And we were honored by our first lady in waiting, our mother, Rebecca, for the first time she joined us, with Manado as well. Nice. And the national organizer was also there in the general secretary. So it was a very family-oriented do and uh, the energy and the determination to see change come was awesome. We'll come to change just in a little bit. Dr. Ifwa yeah. Sakode um, Mansa, what's your role within the MPP and um, can you educate viewers tonight on what you do and how you are expecting tomorrow's function to turn out? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm the uh, National Women's Organizer for MPP USA. Um, and I'm the head of the um, all the women, uh, MPP women in the U.S. Um, we have the, the vision of empowering women and helping to increase their participation in the political process, not just here in the U.S. but also in Ghana. So we mobilize ourselves, we organize ourselves, and we galvanize the women to um, take up leadership roles and also to come together to plan functions that will bring all the women together so that we contribute not just our time, but our resources, our energy, our enthusiasm, our talents, uh, ultimately to benefit the party in Ghana, especially the women. Um, so we work together with the National Women's Organizer from Ghana, um, and as well as the other women's organizers from the different external branches. So uh, the ultimate aim is really to uh, you know, increase the participation of women in politics and also to help our party um, you know, bring up the women to take up leadership roles, to bring votes to the party so we can come to power in 2016. Yeah, let me come to you. As, as the MPP US second vice chair, I, I keep 
pondering on this. How did you attain that feat? Because I'm sure MPP has tons of able young, young men and um, professors and doctors and lawyers. How, how did you jump on that feat? Can, can you share with viewers? <laughs> Well, uh, I think uh, within MPP fraternity, uh, we, we reward hard work and dedication. And not just you know, the titles that people have, that is what we look out for, precisely. Uh, how committed you are to the party right. and your willingness to spend time to make sure that the vision for the party or the goal that we've set for ourselves as a party is done. achieved. Right. And so, with this vision in mind, uh, I have come to this particular event to also support our women's swing, uh, which is a branch of the bigger MPP USA branch, uh, for this program to be successful. Because we've set, you know, before them uh, certain vision or certain goals that we want to attain. One of them being to help our parliamentarian, the women parliamentarians, or the uh, parliamentary candidates who are contesting certain seats and how we can support them uh, both financially to be able to attain that seat that they are contesting. Um, and it requires a lot of money, a lot of resources. And so part of the vision for uh, the women's wing is to you know, raise funds to be able to support uh, women who are contesting, especially in marginal constituencies in Ghana, to be able to governizing our to represent us in power. Let me come to Maisha. Um, you're from Houston yeah. chapter. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what motivated you to join the Houston chapter? <clears throat> is, is there some kind of um, personal interest um, within the party or the admiration for the culture or the, the admiration for the country itself? Or there's something else that you, you foresee that most people do not see? Well, I have two Ghanaian daughters. Awesome. And uh, German and Kuma encouraged me to get involved. So, and also, too, just seeing all of these magnificent women drive me. So I'm here to support them. And not only just them, but all the women in Ghana. Awesome. So that's why I'm here. Can, can you share, share um, or enlighten us a bit on empowering Ghanaian women, the key to nation building, the theme that you chose? Mm -hmm. Otiko, I don't know if you would like to help us out. Um, mm -hmm. Why that theme? And can you explain to us what modes of empowerment that MPP women are looking for to create for the women out there? Ghana is 58 years old now. Mm -hmm. And the population of women is 52%. Wow. So we are the larger population, and yet we are the least developed. That's right. And so when you come into the 21st century, and you have all these women who are becoming educated, and there are still those who are not, then there's a need to work to ensure that we break the gap and bring everybody up to speed. And so when you're building a nation, it's the woman that gives birth to the men and the women. Right. Without women, there will be no men and the world will end. Right. Unfortunately, we live in a society that is male dominant and we have negative traditional practices that hold women back. But from the Yasantua town, the Hawa Yakubus, the Kunedua Jemai Rollinses, and the today's woman, contemporary women, we have shown that we are capable of uh, building the nation and that women are key uh, tools to the development of the nation and right from the home when you nurture children you're beginning to develop the human resource of that nation and uh, to ensure that women come up to speed and contribute our quota effectively we need to empower them so for me this is a very apt theme for the program tomorrow they will tell you more why they chose it but it tells you about the, today, the contemporary woman of uh, Ghana, whether she lives outside Ghana or in Ghana, her ability to overcome her challenges and her ability to contribute to nation building so that we complement the role. It's not a competition. It is how we do it together as partners that our men understand that women are just as capable, if not more so, as men. The same way we bring up our sons and daughters is the same way that we can bring to the table 
of development of our nation. And I see that a lot of women, these are very powerful women in their various fields. They are very capable women who have attained various levels of education. And it's not just that. Even the ordinary woman, right from the grassroots woman, needs to understand her potential and how to contribute to the development of her community and then her region and the nation. So we're looking at uh, get women being educated, understanding how to manage an economy. Women tend not to look at uh, deficits and things like no. that, interest rates and what have you. No, but it's yes. important that today's woman understands those things, right. even in simple terms, because she will be the most affected when you look at the economic pyramid. It's the woman who is the most vulnerable and she's at the bottom of that pyramid. And so if she has to effect change, she herself must understand the issues to be able to know that if the government of the day is borrowing close to 94.5 billion Ghana cities, that's not going to work well for that woman who makes cocoa and takes care of her son who is probably in medical school. You understand yes, that? Women sell cocoa, they sit and sell kinky, they are bitten by snakes and scorpions picking share nuts to develop their homes, their children. That woman also needs to understand that the government of the day must ensure that health care is effective and that the national health care should not be in the state that it is and that all statutory payments should be paid. That her child who is a student trainee, maybe a nurse or a teacher, has to have a job. And when she finishes or he finishes, and the person does not have a posting, she, as we say, she becomes a bosom mm -hmm. and sits like an idol, and then the parents have to feed them again. Feed. But it's the government of the day that has to post them and ensure that they have their allowances. These are not happening. And that makes the woman more vulnerable. But when she's empowered, she will be able to speak out. Her voice will be heard. And then she'll be able to determine her destiny, which means that should be contributing more effectively. So this program is to give all these uh, women, and I am very proud of them for choosing this theme, because it tells, it tells the whole story of our journey as women and what we want to achieve, and their interest in supporting women in orphan constituencies who are in parliament and those who want to come to parliament. Because in our parliament, we have 275 constituencies but the women are only 30, 16 from the MPP and 14 from the NDC. That is not a story that depicts democracy. And democracy is about numbers. And if women are more than uh, men, then we should see more women in parliament. If that is not happening, the whole nation should set up. It's not only a women's issue, it's a national issue. And we will take the fight. I keep saying that. You don't wait for anybody to give it to you. You take it because you deserve it. That's right. And the Ghanaian woman has earned her right, right to be there with the men like you. That's right. And ensure that we're rubbing shoulders right. and supporting as we should. That's right. And you should support as well. Behind every successful man is a woman. But who is the man behind a successful woman? We want to see more of that. That's right. And then we can be equal partners to develop our nation so that those of you in the diaspora would want to come back home. Right. Ghana is a wonderful country, right. and we'd want to see Ghanaians coming to create a better nation. That's what Nanado is talking about, right. to rise and build the new Ghana with these fine women right. from the grassroots, selling banku and going to school, flying planes, being medical doctors, what have you. We, can, we are very capable Ghanaian women, and we want to bring the rest of our sisters to speed. I think it's important for me to let other people talk. <laughs> well, if you just joined us, uh, we, we're still live here with these dynamic women from the New Patriotic Party, NPP Ghana, and also the National Chapter USA. Um, I'm here on my left with um, Georgina Edise. Um Gina, if I may. Yes. Just to follow up on what Otiko just uh, said concerning the empowering of the women. Is, is MPP out of this fundraiser or through this fundraiser looking at setting up sort of funding for the women to take up those, like she said, those who sell cocoa, those who who um, are into petty jobs or menial jobs. Is there going to be something that people can look up and say after four years, okay, some of these funds that we donated has been given or has been given to help out these women? Yeah, 
Is, is there something like that? I think maybe down the line, that is something that will be considered in the women's wing. Okay. I think our goal during this uh, period or during this uh, event is to raise um, funds to make sure that Nanando uh, will be able to come to power in 2016. Okay. And I think through his policies, we believe that he would help mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that we would want to accomplish by supporting some of the policies, some of the things that we want to accomplish, like helping women in Ghana. Um, but you need to have someone in power right. um, to be able to help us do these things. Right. Um, if you don't have someone in power that supports uh, women's rights and the right of women to be a part in partnership, right. um, it'd be difficult to do that. So I think for our program tomorrow, our goal is to get people to come out to support um, our candidate um, so that in turn, he will support the women's uh, win uh, to accomplish some of these things. But I think all these thing, things are down the line. Um, I w it would be kind of wrong of me to, s to say that um, in the next six months, they will see programs for Ghanaian women today, tomorrow. Our goal is to try to get our candidate in power for 2016 right. and hopefully with him in power, he will help us accomplish some of these goals. Mm -hmm. Doctor, let me come to you. Um, after tomorrow's event, mm -hmm. what should Ghanaian women expect from MPP? Is, is it just going to be an event and then after tomorrow we're not going to hear nothing else? Or are we looking at women having the opportunity to call, call up um, Georgina or call you, those here in the U.S. and even those in Ghana, will they be able to relate to you more, Tiko? What is the way forward after tomorrow's event? Well, yeah, the first thing is to get tomorrow's event under our belt and have it be successful the way we envision it to be successful. That is, as Georgina said, to raise the funds. Because politics is really about money and about people, the numbers and money. So um, if we raise the money, you know, campaigns need money to, to run. So uh, the first thing is to raise the funds. And as we said, uh, we are targeting the orphan constituencies, which are constituencies that are um, the seat is uh, occupied by an NDC person, mm -hmm. and that's an orphan. So we are going to target those constituencies that have NPP women parliamentary candidates, mm -hmm. okay, to support them to wrest that seat away from the NDC incumbent. And then the next thing is also there are other constituencies where women are uh, incumbents, but maybe they won by a small margin, okay, or maybe an NPP woman lost by a small margin. So these are marginal constituencies that we can also support to actually, you know, bridge that little gap, you know, uh, bridge that margin and get that seat. So we want to get as many women in Parliament as possible. All right. And after this event, um, we, you know, after doing the uh, constituency sponsoring, we are also thinking about uh, collecting used clothes and shoes and uh, school supplies and to distribute to our women in the rural areas. So one of the uh, parliament new parliamentary candidates came to Worcester I'm from Massachusetts, came to Worcester last week. He said, please help me get used clothes, used clothes, used clothes. So we said that is one of our uh, you know, objectives, objectives, one of the things we want to do. All the women in the different chapters, and we have 20 chapters in the US here, all the women organizers will collect in their areas and we put them together in a common area uh, and put them some of the money that we raise tomorrow to bring them all together to one location and ship them to Ghana. Okay, so that's part of the what we're going to be doing with the money we hopefully raise through this event uh, that we are, we, are, we are having tomorrow. Uh, yeah, L let me just address this to you. As, as the MPP USA National Vice Chair, tomorrow's function itself, I clearly see that there's a ticket flying for $50. And um, I would like to ask, uh, why, why didn't the national executive body look into um, an option of opening the door and getting the maximum number of people to come in and 
and empty out their pockets, but rather you decided to take the fifty dollars from them and hope to get. Um, uh, how are you envisaging that turn out? Are you are you confident so far? Have you heard some news about tickets going well and how do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. When you're working with the Ghanaian community in the U.S., uh, there's that culture of people. Uh, not having that culture of say I'm buying the tickets ahead of an event, and this is not the first time we're having such an event in the USA. Uh, with respect to the women's room, this is our first our main okay. event. Mm -hmm. But MPP USA as a national, we've had different events at different uh, states. Columbus is special, you know, because Columbus. Like this is the first time we are even having any event wow. in MPP USA. Wow. So um, and so in most places. I mean, fifty dollars is just even like a peanut. Of course. But Columbus, I think you guys have your hands so tight. Um, so. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the kind of uh, event that we have chosen yeah. to do requires that we collect something right. before people come in. Uh, we could have decided to do, let's say, a town hall event right. where it's open door, anybody can come in, and then people can express their opinions and things like that. But we chose a different format right. for an event, which will require that uh, because there will be food served and those things all cost money. Right. And so we needed at least people to at least buy their plates to right. be able to be there. So yes. that's the reason for the amount that we are charging for people to come in. Uh, but in, in other words, it's a way of, 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 of also showing uh, some sort of support to uh, the cause of women. Uh, and like the question you asked earlier, I mean, uh, there's a school of thought that, you know, you educate a man, you educate one person, an individual, but when you educate a woman, you educate a community, a nation. And as women, like I said, we are, this is our first maiden event in the USA history. We've never had any women's, you know, event of that uh, nature. And so we need our men to also support us. Mm -hmm. uh, since we, of course, we gave back to all of you, you know, we need your support to make this uh, event very successful. And and I believe that the people in Columbus, uh, I hear you call yourself uh, Baki State. Bakai. Bakai. Bakai State. Bakai. Yeah, you come in your numbers uh, to support the ready course. Like Doctor said, you know, we are targeting certain marginal consequences in Ghana right. that women are either holding their seats but they won by just margin and if we don't get them the support they need they can lose that seat and then there are also constituencies with little logistics and support they should be able to take those seats so those are the areas of you know of our focus as far as uh, how we can you know support them either financially you know any kind of logistics that we can bring to bear in them winning and winning very massively because we believe that if you can get more women in parliament, in the people's parliament, making decisions and policies that affects women and children, we can do a better job as a, uh, as a country in terms of even how we encourage our women to go to school. Because those all come into the issue of empowering women and education. Trust me, all her children will have education. And in Ghana, you see most of the hawkers, you see all of, across Accra and right. Masi are women, That's majority right. of them. You see children crossing streets, mm -hmm. you know, crisscrossing paths to be able to sell uh, ice water and, you know, okay. it's very sad, it's very sad. And our focus is women and children. But children, they are our future and we need to can you get a ticket at the gate as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll have to get so yes. yeah. mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, we will have to get at, at the gate. So, people, uh, report I got was that people didn't know. Right. But now that they know that Nanado is here, Mrs. Akufuado is coming, right. because they didn't believe yes. it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes some people That's will say, they, some people will say, yeah. Some people would say they are mm -hmm. holding this event and Dr. Baumia is coming, Nana Kufado is coming, this person is coming, and then they get there and they, they just used it for maybe publicity. Yeah. But so they sit on the fence. So now that they know that Nanado and Antibeki are really, really coming, and believe me, they're coming tomorrow afternoon uh, at the airport. You can go to the airport and see. Live. Uh, live mm -hmm. in color. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we will have tickets mm -hmm. at the gate, yes.
If you come, yeah, fifty dollars and go. And I think another yes, thing John. I wanted to add. Yes. You, you asked the question, why don't we have an open door policy right. to let people? Um, I think one of the things that I can say is that, you know, to hold an event like this, there is, uh, it's all a cost and benefit analysis that needs to be done. Um, there's a certain, there's, you know, rental, there's food that's being provided, there are services that are being provided. And the amount that is being charged is minimal, mm -hmm. really, to cover the expenses of just putting on the event. That's right. So we are still looking for, for people to come out this is a fundraiser, and so we uh, the amount of money that is being collected for the ticket is not really what is being used not as, at a, all. as a fundraiser. Not at all. It's really just the amount, the required amount to just to get the you event. Right. So we are still looking forward for people to come mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. to really donate uh, money for the uh, for our cause and to also to help with future projects, as has been discussed with the young ladies. So please come out and. Check. And, with, and with that said, we yes. have a GoFundMe account okay. that people can go on. I mean, it doesn't have to be any big amount. Five if you dollars could um, and shed light on, on, on the uh, website or, or anywhere people could go and donate? Yes, we, uh, we will have it on our MPP USA uh, website. website okay. uh, it's, it's also on MPP USA Facebook account okay. that people can go on. You can access that okay. and set up five dollars a month, you know. Uh, payments where you know automatically can be deducted okay. so those are you know just little amounts that you can help you can you know donate to help build democracy in ghana mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. you know because it's all about us building some kind of democracy that we all want to see right. happening in ghana and to start with that you know women should lead that effort and lead that you know campaign and that's exactly mm -hmm. what let me do. go straight to you Maisha. okay because like dana said yes. the other day in his speech Democracy cannot be taken for granted. Right. It cannot be taken for granted. Fifty dollars for a ticket, one hundred dollars for a donation, two hundred dollars, one thousand, whatever. Right. Ghana needs the help. If you're Ghanaian and you love Ghana, give the money. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He needs the money to win twenty sixteen. Come out, give the money. A million, we need it. Period. A million. Five we need it. Period. Months. Yeah. Yeah. That is my show. And the amount that you contribute, for those of us that are accountants, we know how important it is at the end of the year right. to have your, to be able to do that money on your taxes. taxes. Yes. So no. please give, give as much as you can. And we see because you can, deduct, yes. you can deduct it off your taxes. It's a tax yes. contribution. So give so and be given. Give yes. the money that gives. So continue to give. An ordinary day. Right. This is an extraordinary day of, of uh, a community of people coming together. That's right. Whether you are Ghanaian or not, yes. you're coming to enjoy yourself, right. be amongst all these lovely women. And more. And more. Yes. Having Nana Dudankwa right. there and uh, our lovely mother, Auntie Rebecca, right. there as well. And the course. The course of women is the course of Ghana. Right. Mm -hmm. For Ghana to succeed, mm -hmm. the development of women must be at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. We've been left back, and that mm -hmm. is how you measure the development of a nation. Right. Mm -hmm. It is the welfare of the women and children. Right. And so the theme, that's why I love that theme so much. Mm -hmm. Empowering women, a key to national uh, nation building and mm -hmm. transformation. And it encapsulates the vision of Actually. where I want to see Ghana. Mm -hmm. So people come. Mm -hmm. and experience what it is to develop a nation with great women yes. who and have created all of us. Right. And, ahead, and the, um, one of the unique things about this event is that Mrs. Akufuado is the special guest, yes. guest of honor. She is the keynote speaker. And you don't see that. This is, the, we're making history here. Normally, you will see the politician, right. Nana Adudanko Nana Kufuado, mm -hmm. and everybody knows him, everybody right. who sees him, you know, he has the, that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Mrs. Akufuado supports him. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that. But this time, we are showcasing her, and he is supporting her. Right. So, she will give the keynote address, but Nana will give a 
you know, he gave a speech as well, as well as a question and answer period where people can ask questions. So she's so the have, focus. She is the yes. focus of it. She is the focus. She's a very lovely person. And, that's, and that is and that is come and look, come meet her. You know, she's that is one of the this whole women mm. thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, every time we've had any personality from Ghana or party personality come to the US, it's a man. Right. You know, doing a man's thing. Now it's women's thing. And so we need the women of Columbus to come and support us. And yeah, we are men. Yeah, men. Yeah, men. Yeah, men. Yeah, men. Yeah, men. Otherwise, they will shake their responsibility. Yeah. But initially, the, the idea was to just yes. bring uh, Mrs. Sekufuado right. and then have an event, an right. evening of interaction right. with her. And then the man is like, no, I'm not going to sit back. If the mm -hmm. woman is doing yeah. it, I, I need to support her. Yeah. So that is how Nanadu became a bonus mm. of this event. Buy one. Buy one. Get two. Get two. Yeah. Yeah. Two for one. Well, yeah. if you just joined us, yeah. um, we're still live here with uh, the women of MPP. Dynamic women, lovely women. Women who are giving us insight on the program that's coming on live tomorrow here in Columbus, Ohio. That will be a night or an evening of interaction and a fundraiser towards empowering Ghanaian women within our community. Um, don't go far, just um, stay tuned and we'll be right back after this break. Thanksgiving is a time of merry and feasting. You and I are fortunate enough to not have to worry about where our next meal will come from. Though Thanksgiving is not here yet, we know we will have turkey to share with our family in love. So let's extend the same comfort of knowing to someone else in their family by donating a turkey to a family in need of one. Your $15 donation will provide a Thanksgiving meal to a family in need. So please visit www.15forfamily.com. At Payless Furniture and Mattress, we know that less than perfect credit doesn't mean that you should have less than perfect furniture. That's why we're happy to offer no credit check financing. Get the furniture and mattresses you need now. All you need is $25 in your checking account. It's back to school time. Bunk beds from $149. Inner spring twin mattresses from just $79. Queen pillow top mattress sets from $199. We have what you need to make your house a home, all with no credit check financing. Pay less furniture and mattress. Why pay more when you can pay less? Visit Furniture One for guaranteed low prices on quality brand name furniture. We carry a wide selection of bedroom, living room, and dining room furniture from the best brands in the industry. Need help with financing? We offer six months and 12 months same as cash programs. No credit check financing is also available. Count on us for great prices, great customer service, and fast and friendly delivery. Visit us at 3939 Cleveland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, or call us at 614-478-9000. You can also visit our website at www.furnitureoneohio.com. Make your house a home at Furniture One Home Furnishings. Are you paying too much for your car insurance? Does your insurance rate keep going up when you filed no claim? Call Pry Value Insurance Group at 614-388-9989 or visit www.pryvalueinsurance.com. At Pry Value Insurance Group, we have access to over 20 insurance companies. We compare rates with some top insurance companies, and you decide which company best suits your needs. Call right now. An agent is waiting to answer your call. Rates as low as $45 per month. Call us at 614-388-9989 or visit any one of our two convenient locations. On the north side at 1496 Morris Road, Columbus, Ohio, or in Bexley at 3485 East Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. Visit Saraga International Grocery and check out our halal meat department for great prices on top quality goat meat, lamb meat, chicken, and other meat products. Our courteous staff is ready to help you with any custom orders. And check out the rest of the store for great savings. We're also running specials on potato leaves at $2.99 a pound, Indian head cornmeal for $2.99 each, and fufu, two for $5. For quality products and great prices, visit our Saraga International Grocery at 1265 Morse Road, Columbus, Ohio. 
Hi, my name is Eugene Osebwating, host of Co Startup on TV Africa Network. You welcome back um, to a night or an evening with um, Dynamic Ladies of MPP. And we were talking about tomorrow's fundraising dinner dance. Lady Elephants, as they are termed, beautiful Dynamic Ladies I've been talking to tonight. And wrapping up, I would give the opportunity to Otiko. Tomorrow's function will, will be coming up at um, Crown Plaza Hotel, North Weddington, 6500. Double Tree Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43229. And a special guest, Atiko, once again. The special guest is our lovely mama, Rebecca Akufuado, herself supported by Nanadu Dankwa Akufuado himself, and all these wonderful women. It's a good cause to empower our women and develop our nation. So it's extremely important that you come we experience them and also have fun. There will be food and there will be good music and dancing. I have my dancing shoes on. I hope you have yours. See you tomorrow. At what time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. At the Crown Plaza. Yeah. Don't be late and come and join in. Bring your wallets and your big purses. And if I may add, yes, just don't. a little yes, thing. Go ahead, don't um, if you want to take a picture with Nanadu Dankwa, Akufado or his wife, Auntie Becky, or both of them, yeah, you can come a little bit early for what we are calling a red carpet. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so what's so, the dress code? The dress code is um, it says formal or formal traditional. Formal or traditional. Right? Mm. Formal or yeah, traditional. Yeah, MPP colors. Uh, uh, yeah, MPP colors would be yeah. preferable, but you know, we don't hold anybody to that, so long as it's formal or traditional. Um, we also have an MPP USA cloth, but I don't think you got it in time okay. to sew it. Right. But some of us are going to support that, and we'll have some on sale, so you can buy some and um, you know, sew it for the next. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very inexpensive too. Very, very right. beautiful. It was designed and produced by the Women's Wing of MPP wow. USA. Myself. Great, and just for the women within the MPP. Mm -hmm. You have been with me, your host Norbert Bennett, and tonight, we have shed lights on tomorrow's fundraising that comes up here in Columbus, Ohio. It's actually the maiden fundraising dinner dance with Mrs. Rebecca Kufuado and her husband, Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, awaiting, as MPP terms it, awaiting president of Ghana um, 2016. And Ishalao. Ishalao. He will be the president of Ghana come 2016 after the elections. The theme is empowering Ghanaian women, key to nation building and transformation, in line with Nana Dodankwa Ekufado's um, theme, Rise Up and Build, on Saturday, tomorrow, October 24, 2015, from 8.30 p.m. to 2 a.m. Don't be left out. It's going to be at the Crown Plaza Royal Hotel in North Worthington, 6500-6500, Double Tree Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. Zip code is 43229. Special guest, like I'm saying once again, is Mrs. <laughs> Rebecca Ikufado. And that time, uh, you can be formal or you can go in your traditional wear. Let's show the African within us and let's come and have fun. I'll be having my dancing shoes and I'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At Payless Furniture and Mattress, we know that less than perfect credit doesn't mean that you should have less than perfect furniture. That's why we're happy to offer no credit check financing. Get the furniture and mattresses you need now. All you need is $25 in your checking account. It's back to school time. Bunk beds from $149. Inner spring twin mattresses from just $79. Queen pillow top mattress sets from $199. We have what you need to make your house a home. All with no credit check financing. Payless Furniture and Mattress.